Hey, everybody. Now you will hear a brief retelling of the movie Desert Flower. Its plot is based on real events. Wary's Deary is a 13-year-old shepherd girl from Somalia. Her mother divided a flatbread into small pieces and distributed to all the children. Wary's promises her younger brother that she will never leave him alone. The story takes a leap into the future. An adult Wary's wanders the streets of London and afterwards walks into a fashion boutique and picks up a whole bag of jewelry. And when a saleswoman approaches her and threatens to call a security guard, she immediately runs away and hides in a restroom. In the stall, she looks at her passport with a smile. The crying saleswoman stormed into the restroom and was confronted again by a Somali woman who forgot to close up. Wary's knows literally a couple of words in English, more like even memorized phrases, even though she's lived here for six whole years. She chases after an English woman who ran into the elevator. Marilyn tries to escape from the strange girl who persistently pursues her for some reason. Varys is left alone and having found the cardboard was forced to spend the night in the open air. The girl picks up change and eats from the trash. She saw her acquaintance on the bus and followed her again. The girl takes pity on the dirty, stripped Somalica and lets her stay one night, but Marilyn lives in a boarding house and the receptionist doesn't want to let the homeless woman in. The weather today is a sunny downpour, issues another phrase to Varys. Pushpa still agreed to let the Somalian in, just don't pee on the carpet. A grateful Varys kissed Pushpa's hand and called her mom. While Marilyn slept, Varys cleaned the room and made coffee. The Englishwoman wrote an address where Varys could try to get a job and gave her a jacket. In the hallway, they ran into the manager, Neil, who took a liking to the girl with exotic looks. Varys got a job working as a cleaner in a cafe and a customer who was reading a book stared at her. He saw that the girl put the leftovers in her pocket. The stranger turned out to be a photographer, Terry Donaldson, and left a cute African his car. Varys almost threw it away. But Terry asked her not to. The girl showed up at the boarding house again. This time she was willing to pay for a night's stay. Pushpa agreed when Varys called her mom again. She is shy to show her body, so she undresses already in the shower stall. She does something incomprehensible there. Marilyn decides to play a prank on her friend and steals her clothes. Varys is cooking and learning English. She doesn't know her date of birth, only that she was born in the rainy season. Neil peeks into the room and starts hitting on a Somali girl. Marilyn dreams of becoming a dancer, but receives another rejection letter. To cheer her friend up, Wary's agreed to go with her to a nightclub. There she met her eyes with some dark-skinned guy. Harold immediately went over to meet Varys de Har de Har Shartan Mohammer Suleiman Dari, but you can just Varys, her name means desert flower. Harold took off the girl's down jacket and offered to dance, the guy came from New York. Varys liked him, but she immediately got scared of something and ran away from the club. She can't go into the room. Marilyn is having fun with some man. A decent woman doesn't do that, reproaches the neighbor who stepped on Varys. Only a circumcised woman, a good woman, added the Somali woman. Marilyn doesn't know what she's talking about and asks to be shown. Varys pulls down her panties. They cut them all off and then sewed them together, asks the Englishwoman with tears in her eyes. Varys was mutilated when she was only three years old and the same was done to her sisters. Now I can see why the neighbor spends so much time in the bathroom. Marilyn shows her how it should be. You don't have to do that to be a woman. They don't do that to anyone here. Terry has another conversation with Varys. He says the girl doesn't even realize how beautiful she is. Varys wonders why her friend eats goat food. She shows Marilyn her business card. She immediately perks up. Terry Donaldson is a famous photographer and Varys can make a lot of money. Marilyn has something to show her friend, too. Harold from the club left his address in case Varys was in New York. Joy was replaced by sadness. What would he say when he saw that she was different there? Suddenly Varys had a severe stomach ache and Marilyn brought her to the hospital. The gynecologist was extremely surprised to see how the girl had it all set up in there and put the instruments away. I can't give back what was taken from you, says the doctor, but I can make it so that it won't hurt you anymore. They bring in a nurse who speaks Somali. 
he has to translate that she's too narrow and needs emergency surgery. She's been cut up by a real butcher. The doctor is surprised she put up with it for so long. The African says she would betray her people and her tribe, dishonor her mother. Because of this, Varys just got up and left. As she walked down the street, she stared at a woman in a job who had one eye visible behind the cloth. We go back in time. Varys complains to her mother that her bottom is bleeding and hurting. It's a good thing she became a woman as soon as she was brought to a yellow-toothed old man who started immediately reaching his hands out to her. Tomorrow the girl will be his fourth wife. All that remains for Varys is to wipe away bitter tears. There is nothing to be done. She has been paid for. At night the girl decided to run away to Mogadishu to her grandmother. She promises her brother that later she will find him and take him away. The mother did not stop her daughter, but the way through the stony desert is not easy at all. Varys' feet were torn bloody, but despite this, she continued on to the capital the next day. Upon seeing a shrub, the girl immediately pounced on it and began gnawing on a branch. The poor creature cries and remembers her mother. Completely exhausted, Varys came out to the highway, where she was picked up by a trucker. He tried to take advantage of her, but the girl fought back or rather a stone on the head. After reaching Mogadishu, Waris found her grandmother and was finally able to eat. The woman believes that a child who has made such a difficult and dangerous journey has a chance in this life and there is no reason for her to go back. Her grandmother is much richer than her mother because she ran away to the desert to become the wife of an ordinary nomad. After thinking it over, Varis went back to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Her friend came to visit her. Finally, Varys went to the studio of a famous photographer. And how much will you pay me? The first thing the girl asked. She is going to have a better life. Terry Donaldson got to work. From each flash of the camera, Varys squinted hard, but the photographer showed patience. He distracts her by talking about her family. With her portfolio ready, Varys arrives at the modeling agency. Still, being a model is better than being a cleaning lady. When asked if she could walk, where he said, of course I can walk to Mogadishu. The girl put on high-heeled shoes and now walks on them as if on stilts. Lucinda doesn't understand why Varys is wearing that awful sack and hiding something. Lucinda pays for Varys to get a cab to the casting call. Among the many applicants, she has the advantage of being vouched for by Donaldson himself. After a series of photo shoots, Lucinda promises Varys that she has a great future ahead of her, first Paris, then two companies in America. Meanwhile, Marilyn hopes to get a job at a dance studio, but she realizes that she has no chance of competing with the other dancers. Varys gives her a gift, an expensive Gucci watch. For big shows it is still worth learning to walk, which Varys did in the corridor of the hostel, under the guidance of an Englishwoman. Suddenly an angry Lucinda arrives at the hostel and calls Varys an illegal alien. Her passport had expired for six years and she was now being deported back to the desert. Suddenly Neil got down on his knees and offered Somalika to marry him and for the sake of the papers this would solve her problem, but it didn't take. Pushpa knows a man who will forge the documents, Varys OSA Lebanon is ready to go to Paris to party with Johnny Depp, but right at the airport the girl was detained by the police. In the cell, the model recalls how her grandmother sent Evangelia to get a job as a maid. The girl says goodbye to her homeland with tears in her eyes, having left her younger brother here after all. From the airport she is brought to the Somali embassy, where she lives in a small room in a cage and is busy cleaning all day long. No one ever taught her English, so six years flew by. After that time there is a coup d'etat in Somalia, the embassy staff is recalled back to the country, but Varys is not going anywhere. She dug up her stashed passport and took to the streets of London. Varys was bailed out, and all it took was one stamp within six months and the girl would have been granted political asylum. But now she has a limited residence permit, she has to check in every week, one offense, and she will be deported. Billboards and big screens show commercials featuring Varys. Lucinda is angry, but is sure that Varys will work out every penny of the £10,000 she spent on the best lawyer in London. Pushpa apologizes for setting the Somali woman up like that. Varys needs to work and decides to take the gamble of marriage after all. 
Neil promises not to hit on the girl, but Marilyn doesn't like the idea. Neil says that they must live together and sleep in the same bed, because the guys from the immigration service can come at any moment. It's time to work off the debt. There's a big team in the studio, but when Terry arrives, he asks everyone to leave. For the calendar varies will have to shoot nude, the girl obediently naked, the photographer promises that if everything turns out well, it will change her life. Varys trusts the professional and it helps her to relax. She dreams of meeting Harold again, but in reality there is Neil, who calls her his wife, yells, hits on her, and gropes her. One night immigration officials raid the apartment, they search every room, and Neil takes advantage of the moment and sucks on Varys' lips. To her friend, she says that she'd rather be deported to Somalia. She doesn't know how she can stand living with Neil for another year. Now she has to sleep in the same bed with him. And the Englishman goes model crazy. Soon Varys received a notice of indefinite residence permit. She thanked Neil and immediately took the ring off her finger. Finally, Varys can work quietly around the world. She conquers the catwalks of many countries and becomes a real professional in her business. The fashionista now lives in an expensive New York apartment and eats right. She again remembered about Harold and came to him at the specified address. The young man did not immediately recognize her renewed, well, and after Harold's girlfriend came up, Varys was embarrassed and immediately ran away. Alas, it's been a long time since her dreams were shattered. Lucinda is outraged that Varys dropped everything and went to Somalia to shoot a documentary about herself called The Day That Changed My Life. Back in America, Varys is interviewed and says that it wasn't the day she met photographer Terry Donaldson. In general, she is sick of these stories, like from nomadic girl to top model. Varys wants to tell the story and hope it gets published. Varys will remember the day when, at the age of three, she went traveling with her mother. In the desert, they met the very same butcher woman who performed a monstrous operation using a dirty blade and a branch with thorns. The wound was infected and the girl had a fever, where the genitals had been, only large scars, and a hole the diameter of a match head remained. Everything that was cut off was eaten by birds. Harold sits in a cafe and resents that he didn't have time to realize anything. When a girl came to see him, he went into the apartment with a neighbor. And then he saw in a magazine an interview with Varys from the tragedy of female circumcision. Varys herself was preparing to give a presentation at UN headquarters. A friend came to support her, and later Gerald came along too. For over 3,000 years, families in Africa have been convinced that an uncircumcised daughter is unclean, what's between her legs is unclean, and so it must be removed and sewn up. On the first wedding night, the groom takes a blade and makes a cut before penetrating the bride. Uncircumcised girls are expelled from the village and equated with prostitutes. This continues even though the procedure is not prescribed by the Quran. After it, the girls are left physically and mentally ill for life. One of Wary's sisters did not survive the circumcision. She bled to death. The other died during childbirth. As a child, Varys didn't want to be a woman, it's very painful and sad. But now she is proud to be what she is. Worldwide, 130 million women suffer the consequences of circumcision. Varys Deary was the first woman to draw attention to the problem. In 1997, she was appointed a UN ambassador to combat this horrific ritual. Since then, female circumcision has been banned in many other countries, but despite this more than 6,000 girls are mutilated every day.